Poe and Monroe. Maybe we should have a safe word. If you're worried. I'm worried I won't like it. Then we should definitely have one. What do you think, Miss Baratsky? It's Madame. I'm sorry, Madame Baratsky. <clears throat> you must feel relaxed. So if a safe word would help, then yes. What should it be? Clown. Thanks, Raspy. Raspy? That's what Paul calls him. It's how he talks. Places, everyone. And we're live in three, two... Welcome back. As promised, listeners, we have a special treat for you tonight. Madame Baratsky is a past life regression therapist who claims to have helped hundreds of clients discover their previous selves, from ancient Egyptian concubines to Cold War spies. Welcome, Madame Baratsky. Thank you for having me. And of course, it wouldn't be our show without my better and more beautiful half. Say hello, Monroe. Hello, Monroe. Monroe has bravely volunteered to be put to sleep by Madame Baratsky this evening. You make it sound like euthanasia. She's going to wake you up again. Aren't you? Of course. Remind me again why you couldn't do it, Poe? Uh, dodgy knee. In just a moment, Madame Baratsky will put Monroe into a trance. I prefer hypnotic state. Into a hypnotic state. And we'll ask her to describe what she sees. Later on, we'll be taking your calls. Have you lived before? Do you remember any past lives? Or is it all just a money-making racket? <clears throat> Let us know, Monroe. Yes, Poe? Are you ready to meet your past self? I was born ready. Let's hope you were reborn ready. Madame Baratsky, take it away. Now, Miss Monroe, please relax. Close your eyes and focus on the sound of my voice. Listen to nothing else but my voice. <sighs> Madame Baratsky has started the regression process. <clears throat> Focus on your arms. Feel how heavy they are. Feel them sink into the chair and pull you into the deep, deep dark. Let the darkness consume you. Good. She is fully relaxed and suggestible. Now you have crossed into a life you have lived before. Do you remember who you are? Yes. Monroe says she can remember a previous life. Shh! Do not rush. Let the world come to you. Let it reveal itself to you. Let the world envelop you. Step into the world and become your former self. Now tell me what you see.
I'm Elizabeth. That's what you were going to ask, isn't it? Oh, my mistake. Where's Dr. Decker? You don't know, do you? It's okay. I was just being polite. It's nice to see a new face. What did he tell you about me? I'm not violent. Don't know why you'd think that. Let's play a game, Doctor. You're very accommodating for a therapist. You think of something, and I'll get it. A triangle. A love triangle, perhaps. Don't say anything. I mean, you haven't said anything since you arrived. Do you believe me now? that I can read your mind. Don't say anything then. I'll keep doing my thing. Something happened at work. The dry cleaner's in town. I can't switch it off. As soon as I lock eyes with a person, I get their thoughts. I'd like to be a brain surgeon, but I didn't apply myself enough. I am pretty nimble with an iron though. Anyway, there's this guy who walks in with a suit. It's got a stain on the trousers near the zipper. And all he's thinking when he drops them off is, Sharon can't pick these up, Sharon can't pick these up. So he starts screaming at me that he needs the hour service or he'll have me fired. So I call the manager. My manager is also called Sharon. So it gets a bit confusing. I call Sharon over anyway. Sharon! Sharon! This guy's face is a picture, but he's holding it together. Sharon comes over preoccupied. She's thinking about the washing machines. She is the manager, so she normally does that, but this time was different. She was thinking about Nisha spinning away in one of them. The dry cleaning machines are big. You can fit someone in quite easily. You could probably fit a small person into a normal washing machine, actually, if they really tried. Anyway, the store manager hears shouting and comes over. The customer, let's call him Ed, says that we shouldn't be advertising something we can't deliver. Says he's a lawyer and he'll sue us. The store manager, whose name I intentionally forget, says he'll sort it out. Sharon, in the meantime, has gone ashen. I lock onto Sharon's eyes, and I see it again. Nisha, spinning away in a machine. At this point, I'm guessing Sharon has a fantasy about killing her? Ed finally gives in, throws his suit at me, and leaves. The manager looks at me and says, can you work your magic hands over his trousers? He's thinking of me topless, in a hot tub, but with way bigger breasts, and some other things I'd rather not remember. Knowing people's thoughts eats your soul. Ed
Ned's trousers have the stain. Keep up, Doctor. Anyway, I take it round back to start working on it. And that's when I see her. Nisha. Like a rag doll in a hurricane. Just spinning inside this big machine. Her face smashing against glass and metal. Blood pouring out of every opening. She's a mess. Can you see any jewelry? A ring, maybe? Yes. A ring? Good. I need you to get it for me. Do you understand? I understand. Well, this is fascinating, August. We'll be back with more of Monroe's past life in just a moment. What's going on? I'm helping Ellis uncover her past. Why does she need to get this ring? Oh, it's just a technique I use. I think you should bring her back now. It would be dangerous at this point. Then do it at whatever point it won't be. Quiet. I'm trying to concentrate. They closed down the store for a while so the real cleaners could come in. They got rid of all the blood. It wasn't just blood. Her skull had split open and was grating against the metal drum. Some of her teeth. Sorry, Doctor. What did you want to know? Yeah. Dry cleaning machines have huge locks. There's no way of shutting yourself in. You really have to get a friend to help. Or manager. Sharon's fingerprints were the only ones on the machine. Actually, hers and Nisha's. The police thought she'd struggled against the machine trying to fight Sharon. Nobody heard anything, though. Perk. Perchloroethylene. It's what they use in dry cleaning machines. But Nisha didn't drown. The spin cycle broke her spinal cord. So she was paralyzed for a few minutes while her face mashed into everything. Shock probably got her first. Sharon's in a psychiatric hospital now. They arrested Sharon for Nisha's murder. Sentenced to 18 years. One for each of Nisha's. Is that enough? Maybe murder should be punishable by death. People don't change, do they? They just get worse. I did see Sharon once after the trial. She didn't talk. But in her head, all I could see was Nisha going round and round. Her mind was literally stuck like a broken record. I watched the trial from the gallery. Not many people made eye contact with me, but Sharon did. She wanted to die. Really die. 
I don't think she killed Nisha. Sharon's defense. She said Jared killed Nisha, the umbrella man. Jared's the umbrella man. It's a nickname. We were on a work do and it started raining and then Jared pulls out this tiny umbrella out of nowhere and then gets handsy with any girl stupid enough to duck under it. Hence, umbrella man. Sharon's fingerprints were all over the machines and her husband was having sex with Nisha. That's all the jury needed. Nobody saw her do it though. She just didn't have a good enough lawyer. People with money get away with murder all the time though, don't they? Is there anything rich people can't buy? Nisha worked for Sharon as a housemaid. That's how she met the husband. It's so cliche. Nisha was desperate for money and he was desperate for attention. I never told anyone this, but Nisha charged Sharon's husband for sex. I mean, she said she would have done it anyway, but since there was a chance of getting paid. I don't think Sharon knew. Would you pay someone to have sex with you, Doctor? People pay people to have sex with them all the time. Just not with money. They do it expecting love, or opportunity, time, companionship, or orgasms. Nisha was good at cleaning, what can I say? Often I'd go to the back of the machines to hoover the lint trays out and Nisha was there with Jared, hoovering away already. Nisha kissed me once, so I slapped her. She kissed me. It was assault. Don't judge me, doctor. Do you know how hard it is to have a relationship when you know exactly what the other person is thinking? Everyone says they want total honesty and truth. They're lying. What did Nisha think about? <sighs> Nisha thought about Jared a lot. She hated him, but she also wanted to sleep with him at the same time. It's pretty common. I'm sure there's an interesting scientific term for it. Yeah, <laughs> angry sex or anger sex. I'd probably take either right now. Nisha was asking for it, wasn't she? I mean, if your partner's cheating on you, you murder their fling, right? Exactly. She'd have killed her husband for sure. Why start with Nisha? It doesn't make any sense. I think Jared killed Nisha. I told you about the Umbrella Man. She hated him. But in a lady doth protest too much kind of way. Maybe he killed her. I saw Nisha's body in the machine. Her eyes were still open, crying blood. But I looked into them and there was peace, nothing else, just peace.
I'm allergic to nuts. This is definitely normal milk. The milk's a bit funny. Maybe it's on the turn. <coughs> Clown. Monroe, you're back. She's stuck between two selves. Can't you get her to wake up? You want a fried egg for a mistress? She's not my mistress. She'll never be your wife. Monroe. You can go in after her. Just sit down, please. How can I go in after her? I'd have to get in her brain. I'm very good at what I do. Sleep. There's a good boy. You want to see my ring? What? I don't remember wearing one. Shall I take it off? There's something written inside it. Most extraordinary. Does it have an inscription? Four, two, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Jared, the Umbrella Man. He's weird, like a spider. Sharon ducked under his umbrella that time and his hands slithered around her body and kind of rested under her breast. Everyone knew he was touching it and Sharon just gave a weak smile and wriggled away. I tried to read his mind, but it was like a stereogram. His facial expression didn't change. Nothing. It was like he was wrapping his arms around his prey. He didn't seem to be particularly enjoying touching her breast, just for science. Jared's mind was a mess of colored dots that didn't make any sense. I never knew what he was thinking, ever. There's only one other person I know that's like that. Are you trying to say that I don't understand my own mind? I come from a long line of overthinkers. Or maybe I don't. Jared quit after the murder. Well, so did I, to be fair. Well... I've kind of quit everything now. You can't just think of a question mark. If you've got a question, let me have it. People get like this. Flustered when I can read their mind. Cat. I agree. Cat. 
I already said that Jared killed Nisha. Or... Something did. Do you... Believe in the supernatural? No. It's not science, is it? Jared... killed Nisha. Jared was the last person to see Nisha alive. I know something happened. What's the point of having this gift, as Dr. Decker calls it, if you can't help people with it? It's a curse. Doctor, Doctor I'm sorry, I need, I need to, to go. go. I'm being... Ripped. Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. Sorry. In an hour, you'll wake as if from some deep sleep. And I'll be gone. That should cover it. I'll see myself out. <laughs> Dr. Decker. On that note, here's a message from our sponsor that you're sure to enjoy. The police are looking for Miss Baratsky. It's a shame she didn't stick around. Was she even licensed? She came highly recommended. From who? Herself, when she knocked on the door yesterday morning. You let a complete stranger take over my body? I didn't know what she was going to do. I feel so violated. I can't even tell our listeners. We were robbed. She literally took my wallet and your purse. I know. That was everything I had. And that wasn't all she took. What else is gone? My adoption papers. What? My adoption papers are missing. I didn't know you were adopted. Well, I am. I'm not ashamed to say it. Sorry, Poe, I, I wasn't suggesting that. It's unsettling when someone takes something so personal. Just who does she think she is? A past lives travel agent who robbed us whilst we were dreaming. But it wasn't a dream. You were there. You and me. Yes, just like Wizard of Oz. Maybe the reason the people looked familiar is because you made it all up yourself. So, are we dreaming now or is this real? I can't tell anymore. Want me to give you a squeeze? No, this is real. How can you be so sure? Because in my dreams you're much more of a charmer. And richer, I'd imagine. Too soon, Paul. Too soon. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. You're live on air, line one. There was an animal in the road, howling like a wolf. He said it was a hairy animal. The size of a man. And the moon was full. We're going werewolf hunting. I'm Casper Light. You have to stay away from Wolf Lane. I'm sorry. You have no idea what's at stake. Dark Knights. With Poe and Monroe.